Hey guys, clip gain or volume automation? Okay, so it's been a little while since I covered a more technical aspect of Pro Tools, so I figured that's what I would do for today's video. So let's talk about clip gain versus volume automation. I get questions about this from my students pretty often, which makes sense since they're very similar functions and concepts. So let's talk about the difference between the two, and then I'll talk about when and how I personally like to use each. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about what clip gain is and what volume automation is within Pro Tools. So clip gain is when you go to a specific clip on a track within your session. So any of the actually visibly distinct chunks of audio on the track. And in the bottom left-hand corner of the clip, you might have noticed that there's a tiny icon that looks like a small fader. If you click on that fader and drag it up or down, you can adjust the gain on that one clip. You'll see the waveform for that clip visibly adjust too. So you can see a visual representation of the gain adjustment that you've made on the clip. So you just drag that little fader up or down to make the clip louder or quieter. And just remember while you're doing this that if you drag that gain up too high, you risk clipping or distortion. So keep all your basic gain staging principles in mind here because they still apply. And just like with our track faders in Pro Tools, you can hold the option key on your keyboard and then click on the little fader icon to bring that fader back to normal, which is the zero point, which means that you haven't changed the clip gain at all. You haven't raised it and you haven't lowered it. And that's basically clip gain. So what's volume automation? Basically, it's just another way to control the levels on your audio, but instead of controlling the levels for a specific clip at a time, you're controlling the levels through a volume automation graph. Each track within Pro Tools has its own volume automation graph. You can view the volume automation graph in the edit window by switching your track to the volume automation view, or by opening up the volume automation graph as an extra lane below your track. And if you open up an extra lane below your track and it's not on the volume automation view, keep in mind that you can swap it to volume automation the same way we did with the actual track view mode. So we can edit and work with that volume automation graph in a few different ways, but I'm not gonna go into the details of that right now because I've already made a whole other video all about working with automation in Pro Tools. So if you want more details on how to do that, check out the other video. I'll put a link up here on the screen for you guys. So just know that we can work with this graph so that the volume on the track automatically changes through time when we hit play. It's automatically adjusting that volume to the exact values we want at the exact times that we want. So that's volume automation. So now that we understand these two concepts, I'll tell you guys how I tend to use them and why. Basically, I tend to use clip gain first earlier in the process, and then I'll use volume automation towards the very end. This is partially because I view clip gain as a rougher tool since it only works for a whole clip at a time, whereas volume automation can be adjusted at any point in time and not just one adjustment per clip. So in that sense, I just use clip gain to do the rough early sculpting for the audio, and then I put the finishing touches, the more detailed adjustments on at the end using volume automation. The biggest reason why I do this though is because once you start working with the volume automation in any way, Pro Tools adds a breakpoint dot to that volume automation graph. And once that's been done, you can no longer easily use the volume faders for a track to easily mix a whole track's volume level relative to the other tracks. You'll notice that if I try to pull down a specific track volume using the volume fader, if I've already started writing automation to that track, then the fader will just jump to wherever the volume automation graph dictates as soon as you hit play. Whereas if I haven't started messing with the automation graph yet, I can drag the fader for a track up or down to quickly mix its volume over the whole course of the session relative to the other tracks. So it's for this reason that I like to wait until I'm further along in my mix process. And I'll wait until I'm feeling fairly happy and confident with how each track's overall volume over the whole track time frame is mixed relative to all the other tracks. During that time, I'll use clip gain for some volume adjustments. Then once I'm feeling happy and confident with those decisions, I'll move on to working with the volume automation graph to do the small detailed fine tuning for volume levels. So that's basically it. It's why I tend to use clip gain first and volume automation later on. And hopefully it's helpful for some of you to hear how and why this is my personal preference of workflow. With that said, it's not the only way to work. For example, you can always just decide to use volume automation writing techniques if you decide you want to adjust your overall levels for a track later on. It can take a little bit longer than just dragging the fader up and down for a whole track, but it's not too bad. And you might find that worth it to be able to use volume automation earlier on in the process. 
And I've definitely done it that way on occasion. If I'm really feeling like I want to write volume automation earlier in the process than I usually do. So I guess go with your gut. That's what I tend to do anyway. But it's always good to think about and understand the details of how a program works so that you can use that to your advantage while working. So there's that. I hope this helps some of you guys. So I think that's all I have time for for now, but I hope that you guys liked this video and please let me know what you think in the comments below. For today's question, I wanna know, do you use clip gain and volume automation in the same way that I do? And if not, how do you tend to use them? Please leave your answers in the comments below. So thanks guys. As usual, if you like this video, please tell your friends about my channel, check out my other videos or check out my Patreon. I'll be coming out with new videos every other Wednesday and thanks for watching. Okay. I was backstage at a gorilla's show this past weekend and that was awesome and amazing. And like I grew up listening to the gorilla, so I was so happy to be there. So that was a great experience. And I'm gonna post some videos and photos from that to my Instagram soon. So you can check that out if you want. It's at Kato Noise. So all my social media is Kato Noise. So we should just connect everywhere. Um yeah, that's my story.